So this video is called The Evolution of Science, from Ancient Science to Proto-Science to Modern Science. The purpose of this video is to describe, explain, and clarify the origin and progression or evolution of science as an activity throughout the history of humanity. For the purpose of this presentation, I divide the evolution of science into three sections. One, ancient science, that is the science that early genus Homo and primitive human beings used to gain knowledge about the natural world. This science is primarily characterized by trying to gain an understanding of how things in the natural world work and evidence for this science is expressed in the use and development of tools and technology. Two, proto-science, that is the science that Homo sapiens used to gain knowledge about the natural world. This science is characterized by trying to gain an understanding of the how and the why in the natural world and evidence for this science is expressed in writing and in the development of tools and technology. And three, modern science, the science that modern humans use to gain knowledge about the natural world. Modern science is distinguished from proto-science by the demarcation criteria of falsifiability, the rejection of pseudoscientific methodology, the use of mathematics for abstract thought, and the presumed separation from spiritual and religious traditions. Introduction First, let us define science. Science is knowledge that describes and explains the natural world gained through the process of observation, speculation, and experimentation. The steps in the systematic process of observation, speculation or hypothesis, experimentation, and explanation or theory are today called the scientific method. So science consists of three things, a body of knowledge, a method to acquire the knowledge, and a means to express the knowledge acquired. Also relevant to this conversation is to have a definition of the terms engineering and technology and how they relate to science. To put it simply, engineering is the application or use of scientific knowledge to create things for some intended purpose, and technology is what is created from the application or use of scientific knowledge. Technology can be physical in the forms of tools, devices, machines, and gadgets, or technology can be abstract in the form of techniques, methods, algorithms, and processes. By this definition, the scientific method is an abstract technology. Mathematics is another example of an abstract technology. The word mathematics literally means thought technology or technology for learning. It is also important here to compare and contrast technology and art. Technology and art are associated in English with the word craft. As previously stated, technology is what is created as a result of the application of knowledge, the application of science, for some objective or purpose. When the purpose and objective of creating exists outside of the pragmatic and practical, and is purely for feeling, emotion, expression, or aesthetics, then it is called art. Therefore, all art is technology. That is to say, all art is created by using knowledge about the natural world, but not all technology Technology is art, and what distinguishes and separates art from technology is the intent, purpose, and reason for why it is created. With that understanding, then I must assert here, in order to purposefully create anything, in order to create anything for any reason, you must have knowledge about the natural world. You must have science. This is one of the reasons why I use the phrase African Creation Energy on a series of books dedicated to African science, technology, engineering, and mathematics because science is prerequisite to purposeful creation. For someone to argue that technology can be developed without science, they are essentially saying that humans can purposefully create something without any knowledge of the natural world. And it may be that humans can initially create something accidentally without any knowledge of the natural world. However, while that first creation of an accidental technology may be without knowledge of the natural world. Any subsequent creation or replication of the technology based on the original would be on purpose and based on something observed in the natural world, i.e. based on science. Section 1. Ancient Science Understanding the fact that science is knowledge about the natural world, then everything in the natural world can be studied by science. Science is a means to study everything. Moreover, since knowledge about the natural world is necessary for survival, then human ancestors must have had some form of science to gain knowledge about the natural world, even before the formulation of the abstract technology that is the modern scientific method. With languages and environments differing amongst cultural groups around the world, then the expressions, terminology, nomenclature, symbols, and approaches towards gaining and expressing knowledge about the natural world also differed amongst cultural groups, and studying these differences occurs in the field called ethnoscience. Again, recall as stated earlier, science consists of three parts. One, a method to acquire knowledge about the natural world. Two, the body of knowledge acquired through the method and three, a means to express the knowledge acquired. 
while the method to acquire knowledge about the natural world is the same is universal amongst all historical cultures and geographically diverse groups of people the field of ethnoscience focuses on studying the differences in the body of knowledge acquired based on the environment and geographic differences amongst cultures prior to globalization and the intermixing and intermingling of cultures the field of ethnoscience also studies the differences in terminology nomenclature symbols and methods of expressing the knowledge acquired amongst historical cultures and geographically diverse groups of people Perhaps the most important aspect of science is that it is knowledge that explains the natural world. Explanations of the natural world are what give science the ability to predict. Explanations about the natural world can answer the question how, what the Greeks referred to as techni, or explanations about the natural world can answer the question why, what the Greeks referred to as episteme. When you can explain how something works, you can predict what will happen under certain circumstances or conditions or if certain steps are taken. When you can explain why something works or why something happens, you can predict when a phenomenon will occur under certain circumstances. Also, as stated earlier, another aspect of science is that it requires a means to express the knowledge acquired. Explanations about the natural world that answer the question why have to be expressed through the technology of writing. Therefore, historical evidence of science which provides explanations about the natural world that answer the question why show up in the historical record after the invention of the technology of writing in respective cultures around the world. However, explanations about the natural world that answer the question how are demonstrated through the development of technology because these explanations are pragmatic and immediately useful when it comes to manipulating the matter in the natural world. Evidence of science which provides explanations about the natural world that answer the question how show up in the historical record in the form of the various tool technologies created and utilized by early human ancestors. Homo habilis is the name given to the species of archaic human ancestors found in East and South Africa, dated to roughly 2.3 to 1.65 million years ago. The name Homo habilis means the handyman and refers to the widespread Stone Age industry of tool production and use amongst this genus Homo. These stone tools are called Odawan, named for their discovery in the Old Dubai Gorge in Tanzania and spread across much of Africa, South Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. These early stone tools were simple, usually made with one or a few flakes chipped off with another stone. From Homo habilis to another archaic human ancestor named Homo ergaster, the working man, found in Africa dated to roughly 1.7 to 1.4 million years ago. Like Homo habilis, Homo ergaster is named the working man because of their widespread use of more advanced stone tools than their predecessors. The next evolution of prehistoric Stone Age technology is called Ashulian and refers to prehistoric Stone Age tools manufactured characterized by distinctive oval and pear-shaped hand axes. The Ashulian tools used by Homo ergaster were also used by Homo erectus 1.5 to 1.26 million years ago in the Afar region of Ethiopia. Homo erectus is also generally credited as the first genus Homo to develop the science and technology to harness, control, and use fire. It is important to emphasize here that the development and use of tools and technology is evidence of science. Recall that science consists of three parts. One, a method to acquire knowledge about the natural world. Two, the body of knowledge acquired and three, a means to express it. The method to acquire knowledge about the natural world, i.e. the scientific method, generally consists of the steps of observation, speculation, experimentation, and explanation. In order for archaic humans to develop stone tools, they would have to observe the stones in the natural world, speculate or hypothesize that the stone could somehow be transformed or used as a tool, experiment and try different methods of transforming and or using the stone as a tool, and then, if successful, explain how the process works to another individual either by demonstration or communication so that the process can be replicated. So, the creation and development and use of tools and technology is evidence of a scientific method or proto scientific method having to exist in the mind. For archaic humans, this proto-scientific method was the trial and error method. In fact, the trial and error method also contains falsifiability, the condition used as demarcation criteria for the modern scientific method. In order to try something in the trial and error method, you have to have a belief or speculation or hypothesis about what works. Then you try it or experiment with it, and if there is no error, 
if the hypothesis is not falsified, then you can assume that your belief was correct. However, what distinguishes the modern scientific method from the trial and error method is that in the modern scientific method, there is an emphasis on the importance of mathematics, precise measurements, keeping written laws of experimental trials, and controlling conditions within the experiment to reduce confounding factors. From Homo habilis, the handyman, to Homo ergaster, the working man, to Homo sapiens, the wise man, the need to obtain and use knowledge and information about the natural world has been so integral and important to our survival that we have embedded it into the various names of our species and early human ancestors. We can even be considered Homo science, the science man, proto-science. The transition from the ancient science of archaic and early human ancestors to the proto-science of Homo sapiens was of course a gradual process which occurred over millions of years of human evolution. The proto-science of Homo sapiens is distinguished from the ancient science of archaic and early human ancestors in that, in addition to explaining the how of the natural world expressed through the development of tools and technology, proto-science also involved attempts in explaining the why of the natural world expressed through the invention of the technology of writing starting around 3000 BC. The evolution of science is linked to the evolution of human cognition. As humans evolved to think abstractly and symbolically, so did our abilities to express and represent knowledge about the natural world. In proto-science, we find that mythology, allegory, and mathematics are methods of abstract symbolic thought used to express knowledge about the natural world. Since knowledge or information is the most valuable resource, and our acquisition of knowledge and information is necessary for survival, then the knowledge acquisition activity that was proto-science was considered highly important or sacred. And so another characteristic of proto-science is that it was intricately connected with spiritual and religious traditions. When we study the ethno-science of cultures around the world, that is the way different cultures around the world historically gathered and expressed explanations about their environment and the natural world. From about 3000 BC to 1700 AD, we consistently find roles in the respective cultures in the STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, also combined with the culturally analogous roles of priests and conflated with spiritual, religious, or esoteric traditions. In addition to explanations about the natural world being offered through proto-science theories, the various cultural, spiritual, and religious traditions would also make attempts at offering explanations about the natural world through theos. This can be seen globally in the cultures of ancient Egypt, ancient Mesopotamia, Africa, India, Greece, Asia, and Mesoamerica during this time period. Ancient Egypt provides clear examples of this paradigm, with architects, physicians, blacksmiths, and mathematicians all being referred to as priests in the historical literature, and also each profession having an association with a unique deity in the ancient Egyptian religion. In particular, ancient Egypt provides the first written evidence of steps that resemble the modern scientific method on an artifact called the Edwin Smith Papyrus, an ancient Egyptian medical textbook dated to around 1600 BC. This papyrus outlines the steps of examination, diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis to the treatment of disease which mirror the steps of the modern scientific method of observation, speculational hypothesis, experimentation, and explanational theories. It is important to note that although this papyrus describes an outline of steps that are similar to the modern scientific method, this papyrus is dated to 1600 BC and should not be considered the mark of the beginning of science. As we have discussed, science has evolved along with humans and evidence of it is expressed through the development of technology. Pyramids were built literally a thousand years before the method described on the ancient Egyptian Edwin Smith medical papyrus. The Step Pyramid of Djoser, designed by the architect Imhotep, and the Great Pyramid of Giza are dated to the 2600s BC. So clearly, the ancient Egyptians had a systematic method of gaining knowledge about the natural world in order to build the pyramids. And the evidence of their science is expressed through their technology, the things they created, even before we have the inscription of the method on the papyrus which mirrors our modern scientific method. The formulation of the scientific method as a mental technology for performing science occurs after years of using the proto-scientific method of trial and error to analyze and determine which method seems to work best. Moreover, 
As we will discuss later, falsifiability is part of the demarcation criteria between modern science and pseudoscience, where modern science makes an attempt to collect evidence supporting and refuting or falsifying its speculations and explanations about the natural world, whereas pseudoscience only seeks evidence to support its speculations and explanations about the natural world. The steps described in the Edmund Smith Papyrus can be considered a proto-scientific method, but since it is possible for someone to perform a false diagnosis, then unless the procedures described in the Edwin Smith Papyrus also address how to handle any potential false diagnosis, then it is possible for an ancient Egyptian physician to have been following the steps of examination, diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis, performed a false diagnosis, and proceeded like it was correct, and thus would have been performing a pseudoscientific methodology by the demarcation criteria that we use today. The same steps that occur in the modern scientific method also occur in the pseudoscientific method, and falsifiability is part of the demarcation criteria that separates modern science from pseudoscience. So, it is possible that at times the ancient Egyptians were following a scientific method as we think of it today, and at other times it's possible that they were following a pseudoscientific method as we think of it today. And this dichotomy was a characteristic of proto-science, where concepts related to modern science and pseudoscience were mixed. There are some concepts from the proto-sciences of alchemy, astrology, numerology, metaphysics, and natural philosophy from ancient times, which became part of the modern sciences of chemistry, astronomy, mathematics, and physics, respectively. Then, there are concepts from the proto-sciences of alchemy, astrology, numerology, metaphysics, and natural philosophy from ancient times that are now considered pseudoscience. For example, the Greek mathematician Pythagoras dealt heavily with numerology, but also is credited with concepts that are now used in modern mathematics. The English scientist Isaac Newton dealt heavily with alchemy, but is also credited with concepts used today in physics. The Royal Society is considered the world's oldest national scientific institution, but it had its inception as the Invisible College, a group of proto-science natural philosophers with connections to esoteric organizations like the Rosicrucians. Modern Science The transition from proto-science to modern science took about 200 years, from the 1700s with the Age of Enlightenment or Age of Reason until about the early 1900s where demarcation criteria between science and non-science or science and pseudoscience were clearly established. While Africa, the Middle East, and the Eastern world were the main drivers during the time of the development of proto-science, the transition from proto-science to modern science was spearheaded by the Western world, i.e. Europe and its colonies. Another characteristic of modern science that differentiates it from proto-science is the use of math mathematics over allegory and mythology as the best mental tool for abstract and symbolic thinking. The mythology, allegory, and symbolism used in proto-science could come across as mysterious, cryptic, and ambiguous to those untrained in the ways to decode and decipher the message. And mathematics has the ability to be just as mysterious and enigmatic as mythology to those not educated and trained in mathematics. However, the rigorous deductive logic and reasoning that is present present in mathematics, which is not necessarily present in mythology, makes mathematics the best mental tool for abstract thought in science. With modern science separating mathematics from mythology as the best tool for abstract symbolic thinking, there also is a presumed separation between modern science and religion and spirituality whereas that connection was more prevalent in proto-science. The two main reasons for the presumed separation between science and religion is because religious convictions can serve as biases that can impede free and genuine scientific investigation. Also, where the explanations about the natural world offered in religion through the various theos, deities, or god figures are finite and do not update over time, Modern scientific theories do not claim to be the only and best explanation for natural phenomenon, only the best at the time, and may be overturned later after more evidence, information, and data is collected. Additionally, while modern science makes an attempt at separating science from religion and spirituality, modern science still uses terminology and names of deities and characters from religious mythologies as scientific nomenclature. For example, the names of planets, stars, and some elements on the periodic table, and this is why the separation between modern science from religion and spirituality is presumed and not actual. Also, while the modern scientific method is still the best and most prevalent approach, in recent years with the rise of big data in the information age, 
an approach that is being employed in data science and algorithms for machine learning is more of a blind empiricism or non-hypothesis two-step based approach of data collection and data evaluation and summarization which then serves as a data set on which additional questions may be derived this gather data and evaluate approach used in modern data science is essentially the same approach that newborn babies and our early ancestors used to gain knowledge about the natural world conclusion in conclusion, information and knowledge about the natural world is the most vital resource and our science, our ability to acquire, organize, explain, and comprehend the natural world has evolved as we have evolved and has been essential to our survival. The purpose of knowledge and information, the purpose of science, is to use and apply it, and this use and application of science is expressed as technology. Just as it is possible for certain biological traits to evolve independently at different points in time, it is also possible for scientific discoveries to occur independently in different locations at different points in time, and this is investigated through ethnoscience. For example, the Iron Age occurred in different regions at different points in time without people from those regions making contact with one another. Just as human evolution is not a linear progression from primitive to advanced, I would argue that the evolution of science is not a linear progression either. Natural selection is a key mechanism in evolution whereby organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. In science, the best concept concepts for explaining the natural world and the environment tend to survive and serve as the building blocks for further scientific theories and technologies.